Well, hey folks, welcome back. Fist25 here with another ship review. This time, the stealthy, the dangerous, the size 9 torpedo shooting Aegis Eclipse. That video is coming at you right now. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. We are here for another ship review, this time on the Aegis Eclipse. I just decided, hey, I'm going to pull this thing out today. I haven't flown it in a while. I made sure it was equipped and as fully stealth as I could get it. A couple laser cannons. And let's take a real quick walk around the ship while I have it out here. You can see it kind of has that red canopy, and it looks like, uh, kind of like the, what is that, the B-1 bomber? Uh, mixed with a little bit of the B2 stuff, I think. Uh, it looks stealthy. It looks like it has, you know, radar or beta, LADAR or whatever uh, absorbing, LIDAR absorbing panels, radar absorbing panels. It's got, it's very angular, like the, like the stealth, like the stealth fighter. I actually saw one of those uh, um, when I was in the Navy. Uh, the, the Air Force brought one to our hangar with our F-18s and they wouldn't let us go real close to it, but uh, it was super cool. It was amazing. Anyway, uh, check out this ship. We're on the starboard side here up by the fuselage. You can see all our antennas and our, our PDOT Pro for our airspeed. Uh, it's got like this flat landing gear down there. You can see the strut looks really cool. Um, and then it's got a landing gear at the end of each wing to hold it up. So super awesome. Um, it's got some numbering on the side. It looks like this is the intake here. It says vent warning. Maybe that's the retro thruster. Like I said, I don't fly this a whole lot. Maybe this this guy up here closer to the fuselage is the intake. We're going to have to see when we go flying this. Um, and I probably haven't flown this all of 312. We're going to fly it today. And we're going to see how stealthy we can get. We're probably going to shoot some size 9 torpedoes at people. You can see there's a maneuvering thruster right there on top of the wing. And the wings fold up here, and it looks like the landing gear folds up into the wing. Uh, but the wings fold up to, you know, to reduce the size a little bit, let the landing gear come out. Um, man, this ship looks just super cool. We're out here at Crew L1 where it looks fantastic out here in the, the crazy gas cloud. And the ship looks just, whew. Yeah, I mean, it's not like black. Like, uh, I always, I always think a stealthy or fast, like a, like an SR 71, but no, it's not, it's not quite that. We can see the markings on the side of the wing, the Aegis markings and all that stuff. Um, very low profile. So let's, uh, let's head towards the cockpit and get in this bad boy and take it for a spin. What do you say? I think you get in. Well, shoot. I don't even remember anymore. I always look up whenever I hit F. This is the entrance point right here on the side. So we're going to enter the pilot seat. All right, now the, the cockpit's all blue right now because we haven't started anything. I believe it goes green when we start up. Uh, let's see our canopy close there. Ooh, that looks cool, doesn't it? It looks it looks quiet. It looks like it belongs in uh, you know like Hunt for Red October type movies where it's everything secret and uh, you know the blue lights. Like when I was on the uh, aircraft carrier, I've been on four different carriers. Uh, whenever you go into ops, one of the ops rooms and things like that, everything's like got these blue lights. Sometimes red, but it's either blue or red. And most of the time it's blue, just to keep everything kind of. Things are going on. It feels like like it's serious. But let's go ahead and fire. Oh, dual sticks too. I love it. Let's, let's fire this thing up. Even the engines sound quiet. You can hear them kind of spool up. Let's take a look. Oh, something's flying out there. Ooh, look at the engines. You can barely see any exhaust. That's that's very reminiscent of an F one seventeen. Just look at look at the profile there, man. It looks just amazing. 
Okay, let's get up up here before they tow us. So we'll do a lift off. And we'll go ahead and fold in our gear. Look at that big bomb bay with us. The size 9 torpedo. Let's close that up. We're going to hit P to turn off weapons. And it certainly did just close. Look at how angular this is. You're welcome, buddy. It's just so angular. So unique looking. As I put it on cruise control, you can see there's our maneuvering thrusters right there. And when we actually give it some gas, I mean, it puts out a little bit of exhaust. Enough to see what's going on, at least. Let's go to SCM speed while we're out here, since we took off in space. SCM speed for this guy, 146 meters a second. Let's fire it up to full speed, shall we? Give some afterburner. That's afterburner, so it doesn't look that much different. Nine hundred and eighty. Nine eighty one. Nine eighty one is our max afterburner speed in this guy. All right, let's go back to SCM. Whoa. That's been happening in the 312. I don't we don't do anything and the ship just kind of rocks a little bit. Let's see those retro thrusters. Yeah. See they are coming out of those guys right there. Just look like almost look like air. Oh, it's so quiet out here. I hope I don't run into an asteroid. It's so quiet out here. The ship looks like it should be quiet. It looks it looks stealthy. Let's give it a roll. Very slow on the roll. Not that it was ever meant to be like super fast. It's not a fighter. I got a couple of FL-22 like stealthy cannons on here. Laser cannons. Oh, I turned off my weapons. Let me turn them off. Ooh, that bomb made door animation. Let's see, you see the Yeah, let's see if we can get some sunlight on the belly of this guy. You can definitely see my weapons there, and they do, I think they do enclose when you close your weapons up. But yeah, just in case we need some guns, which we probably will, but we can see all three torpedoes in there, and that's what this guy is, Torpedo Bomber Extraordinaire. Let's turn off our weapons again. Well, it looks like, oh yeah, our guns do retract. Oh, that is sick. Cool. Okay. Let's take a look around the... Oh, it started the noise thing again. Let's take a look around our cockpit. So we have one, two, three, four multi-function displays. Give us a little bit of different trajectory. Oh, no, I'm sorry, five, because we have one down here. And uh, up here, do we have anything that does anything? I don't think so. No, and there's not a whole lot of glass here. It's very Cylon-like, very uh, very focused on the injector. There's not, no glass down there. As far as our buttons, here's our ejection handle. On our right stick, we can spool the quantum drive. We have flight ready and power on in the center. Um, on the left stick side, we have you know canopy, ladder, like six times. Um, is that it? That may be it, guys. Spool quantum drive. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I don't necessarily see that we have a 3D radar. Either. I wonder if I can shut off power. Oh, let's turn power off. Ooh, it went back to blue. Oh, did that look cool? What's it look like from the outside? Just empty. Wish I could see the blue. Go flight ready. No, I really don't have a radar display that I can see. I don't know. Maybe something's wrong with it. Maybe I got a bad chip. Oh, there's how you exit zero G. It's up to the top. I don't know, guys. Let's uh, let's keep on flying, and uh, we'll take a real quick look at the outside again. Looks really good. 
looks really good. Oh, let me turn the weapons off. It, I mean, that triangle shape, that, that kind of stealth fighter, stealth bomber shape looks really cool. And then the hole that's in the wings um, really just adds to it. it. Looks like it should be dangerous and stealthy. Doesn't look like it should hold three massive torpedoes, but, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, we're going to see if it serves its purpose. At least in a dogfight, we're going to see that. Um, we'll probably take it to the atmosphere and test that out, too. But for right now, let me go ahead and quantum out to the Crusader system, and uh, we'll see if we can get in a little trouble, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're back. We're about to quantum to our next mission here. I do not know why it makes that sound. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Eclipse before I go into stealth mode. The Aegis Eclipse is a stealth bomber designed to get in and strike before it's ever even spotted. After extensive service with the UEE, this high-tech military equipment is making its debut in the civilian market in 2947. So it's four years old. Um, the Eclipse, manufactured by Aegis, uh, obviously is zero SCU cargo capacity. It is designed to be a hard striker with those big uh, three size nine torpedoes and then a little bit of defensive capability having a couple size two guns. Um, it, uh, it came out in Alpha 3.2, if you care. <laughs> um, uh, some of the features of it is that it has a very small cross section, and that, that's because of the, the way it's shaped. It's shaped like a you know, very thin, very uh, arrow and, and triangle-like. Um, the arrowing design of the Eclipse allows the ship to stay stealthy, and conspicuous twin engines are molded into the shape of the hull. Weapons are stored internally until they're ready for use, all that stuff. Uh, multiple wing configurations. The wings can be adjusted to space or atmospheric flight to adapt to the environment. I don't think we have that featuring yet. Uh, during zero-g space flight, the Eclipse typically adopts the compact wing position in order to create a slightly smaller profile for harder detection. During atmospheric flight, the wings of the Eclipse can fully expand and to place smaller fins around the body to improve aerodynamics. That'll be awesome once that's in. Uh, but basically, a mid-range stealth bomber uh, kind of designed to sneak past enemy lines, drop some big torpedoes, and bug out. Um, it, so you can buy this ship in-game, uh, I believe at the New Deal in Lorville, for th uh, basically 3.5 million Alpha UEC. You can rent it for 69,800 Alpha UEC a day, or, or 3,400, I'm sorry, 34,900 rec. Uh, it takes about 31 minutes to claim it. Expedite time is about five minutes. It costs about 7,700 Alpha UEC. If you want to buy the ship with real money, it goes for about $300 US. Um, as far as lore goes, uh, in the game, it was introduced in 2930, which is about 21 years ago when it was introduced into the verse, and it's been in the civilian market for four years. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and I encourage you to go to StarCitizen.tools uh, and look up the Eclipse. There's Project Eclipse and military services and uh, declass declassification under the Historical Truth Act. There's all kinds of lore behind here, especially with Operation Lighthammer. Uh, but a lot of it has to do with the Cold War, with the, the Xi'an and all that stuff. Um, there is... Uh, a paint scheme that I don't have because I do not own the ship in real life, but it's a, a limited edition white and gray livery with gold decals and yellow tinted glass created for the uh, Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2950 Best in Show event. And I'll try to put that up on the screen. And that's what the ship looks like. Um, it looks really awesome uh, with that paint job. So, uh, I... Kind of made, I, I was really, really close to actually picking up an Eclipse um, during the Expo, but I, I ended up going for the Perseus instead. So, um, Other than that, the development was by Gavin Rothery um, in collaboration with Paul Jones. Uh, it was designed at Foundry 42 in the UK. Um... So it's a very UK ship. Um, there's man, there's so much to this ship. Uh, 
Yeah, the eclipse is heavily influenced by the real life bomber, the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit. Big B-2 bomber uh, of the United States Air Force. Um, so anyway, let's uh, let's go over a little bit of stealth mode here before we we head out. First off, I'm going to go to I'm going to drop my uh, cruise control and I'm going to go to SCM speed. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is disable our weapons by hitting P. That's going to give us a lot more stuff. That means the, the torpedoes and the guns are not online to take anything off. Now, the shields, they charge really fast because they're mirages. But I think I'm going to leave them on this time because this ship is super vulnerable without them. But just like before, um, we need the heat menu up. And this is the power menu. Let's go ahead and change this out to the heat menu. And we can see right now we're putting out 268 heat. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. EM is 405, which is really low. IR is pretty high at 3192. Let's suppress the overall IR by clicking that button. And we're going to drop the IR down to 2582. So it makes us harder to detect. Um, our shields are giving us a little bit of IR. And, and so it's just the internal, you know, the internal heat of having the ship on, engines on, all that stuff. But we need some of that stuff. So now the ship is stealthed out. I have full stealth components. Our total stealth is somewhere around 3,000. So let's uh, let's head to our target. Let's see what we can do. The minute we have a target, we're going to turn on weapons, and I'm probably going to try for a target lock. So, so here we are at Gundo. Uh, I don't see a target. Oh, it's probably over here. So I have a neutralized, but no target. And he might not have spawned in yet. Oh, maybe he has. Has he spawned us? We don't have a radar lock yet. I'm going to back up. I'm going to turn on weapons. You still, I don't have the radar lock, uh anything and I don't have anything for him either maybe he's in an eclipse too I'm gonna grab my sticks just in case looks like he's frozen right there I cannot target him I'm well within size 9 missile range right right now but he's not like real hot on the screen so Maybe we just go. Oh, there he is. Does he see us? He doesn't see us yet. Let's target him. He's not moving around. He's in an Avenger stalker, so he's probably pretty stealthy. Let's give him a missile lock. He doesn't know where it's coming from. Side side, take a while to lock. Let's fire. It take a while to fire, too. Wow, that took forever. Look at that big size nine heading towards him. Let's see if he even avoids it. Because it should just take him out. Boom. We didn't even have to see him, guys. I mean, bounty is over. Now, granted, that was the lowest bounty. That was all there was, but six grand. Hey, that pays for the missile. But let's see if, if he has any friends or anything. He definitely has some friends. Cuddy Black. Let's try to get him without doing a torpedo, I guess. Let's see if the uh, the shields and the laser cannons hold up. Not a big dogfight ship, the Aegis Eclipse. But it's also not a very high-risk mission. I would have loved to do something on a Valkyrie, but uh, those none of those missions were available. Now keep in mind the Mirage shields on the Eclipse, they do recharge really fast. Of course, the power plant is a stealth, so the weapons are going to overheat. There we go, they're back online. 
How long does it take for an eclipse it, to take out a Cuddy Black? I mean, I'm taking out some of his shields. Or do I back up and do I do I go ahead and use my torpedoes? It's probably not going to pop a lot of chaff or flare because it's a it's a low risk target or whatever. But I do not like how much these overheat. I used to use repeaters and ballistics on here all the time. But I just wanted to go with something I knew that was very stealthy. Well, I wonder if I go backwards if he'll lose my target signature. Maybe it's possible. Hey, okay, we're still getting we're still getting we're definitely damaging him. I'm just doing a right strafe, guys. Circle of death. Get a little closer, make sure to get from weapons range. I'm hitting them. I, uh, just these underpowered weapons, you know what I mean? But that's not what this ship is designed for. We did get him, though. Cuddy Black took him out, hey, extra thousand bucks. Let's see, uh, before we go over to the loadout here, there's not that much more to this video. Um, let's see if there's any more contracts out there. Ooh, very high risk. Oh, uh, Habab. Maybe we can just take out the lead guy and then, and then bounce. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Maybe he'll, maybe they'll blow me up. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm excited to find out. Of course, it's a yellow. Probably an asteroid. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my weapons. I'm gonna go back to the uh, SCM speed. <laughs> what do you guys think are my chances before I go out there? Of at least getting not just a size nine on the lead guy. But getting a size nine on him, taking him out one shot, which it should. And then him not that well, whatever the pilot is, guy or girl, not deploying countermeasures in time like the last one. Or even that he's going to spawn in right away. So, you know, there's all kinds of different little factors here. Okay. I don't think he's there. I think he's gonna spawn in somewhere else. I wish I had a radar. Oh, see, yeah. He's gonna spawn in some areas. Oh, he's still pretty far away. Oh, but he's hot. Targeting him. He's in a Vanguard Warden. Let's target him with a missile. Turn on the weapon system. He's not coming at us. I don't think he sees us yet. Stealth, baby. Firing. Ooh, look how big that torpedo is. Let's see what it does to him. I mean, it'll take out a warden for sure. It looks like he popped countermeasures. Nope. Hey, guys. Just wait. How fast? Can you make money with an Aegis Eclipse? Let's see. 20 grand in... I don't know. Minute and a half? How much does a torpedo cost? We're going to go... We're, we're, I'm actually going to find out. His friends aren't even here. We, we don't even have to wait for his friends. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do another one. <laughs> oh, dude. I haven't found the Eclipse in so long. Let's look at this guy. I mean, his friends are worth like a grand. Okay. Oh, did his friends spawn in? No. Okay. Where's this guy at? Oh, do I have the map bug? Yes. There we go. Crusade. Oh, they're at yellow. How far away are they? 
the other side. Oh, one. Okay. Kind of a street shot. We don't even have to wait for this dude's friends. Like, why risk getting killed for maybe 2,000 credits? You know what I mean? I wish I had a radar, though. I've started and stopped the ship like four or five times um, it, when I was traveling and like in between stuff that's not on the video. And it just would not come up. So I'm wondering if that's a bug for 312 that the Eclipse has no radar. Which severely limits its PvP ability, to be honest with you. I'm going to turn weapons off. Where are you, Albert? Ooh, that's him. He's really far away. He definitely cannot see me. He's in a warden. Let's let's target lock him. Let's see if this even works. Who knows? It might. Right, he's locked. I want to get a, a shot from the bottom. Look at that torpedo. <laughs> Let's see what it does. Don't pop countermeasures, dude. You don't even see that torpedo. You're just sitting in your ward and having a good time. All of a sudden, like, hey, who's, who's missile locking me? Why is this so far away? What's that big triangle thing coming towards me in? Oh, oh, I gotta pop countermeasures. He definitely popped countermeasures or I just missed. And no more missiles. So let's, uh, let's, I guess we do it the old fashioned way. We can take out a Cuddy Black. We can take out a, a, a Warden. Man, I was hoping to just get another like quick 20 grand. Maybe we should have got closer. But hey, we're a sniper, right? Let's let's slow down, shoot him from afar. He definitely saw me. And his friend saw me. Oh, danger, danger. Oh, it doesn't like this. I'm using too much afterburner. Ooh, it's taking down shields! Not what the ship's meant for. I can't use my weapons because they're overheated. Because I used too much afterburner. Oh! His friends are shooting the crap out of me. Oh, I'm damaged. I lost my left wing. There's no way I'm taking this guy out. Let's go. Let's run and spin with with one wing. Low cross section, guys. Low cross section. Oh, look at the ship. The landing gear's still there. Oh, I took so much damage. Not nimble. Not not a dogfighter. However, all is not lost. Ooh, I wonder if we could go anywhere to repair on Yella. I don't know if I want to go into atmosphere on this thing, to be completely honest with you. I think area 157? Let's try it. I don't want to go all the way back to PO. Well, shoot, maybe we should. Let's try it, because I can see Crusader. We can always stealth back in there. I guess we'll see how much the repair bill is when you're missing a, an entire side of your ship. I think I'm pretty lucky I didn't get blown up, to be honest with you. Well, I'm going way too fast. Drop the invisible gear wing thing. Yeah. Uh, 
a fighter, this is not. It is a bomber. So, like, I don't know, maybe you, you hang out with your friends and you're doing FPS missions, and they need to blow up uh, some of those turrets. You come in with the Eclipse. That could be a way to do it. Where you have a contract out on some kind of a freighter ship, and the Eclipse comes in, takes them out. All right, so let's look at our cost here. Now, the restock cost for the three torpedoes is 10000 That's half the price of a very high-risk target. Repair cost is really low. The gas is really low. Of course, I didn't use, like, anything for gas, but... Uh, torpedo prices have gone up in 312 and that's okay. And why can I... Is that the window? Oh, that is the window. I thought I could see into PO or something. All right, let's look at the magical repair of the Aegis Eclipse. Oh, and it's back. Should we go back after him? I don't think we're going to. I think I'm going to cut this video short. We're going to head into Urkel. Um, I'm not going to press my luck. But yeah, you guys saw what I, what I did there. Why is that thing in front of the ship? That's crazy. Maybe we're going to 30K. I don't know. That was fun, guys. I, I haven't done size nines in a long time, even with the inner stuff. So thank you for watching. And uh is that guy in a hawk? He is in a hawk. Awesome. Let's uh let's switch on over to Urkel.games and uh we'll see you guys real soon. Alright, everybody. We are here at the Urkel.games DPS calculator for the Aegis Eclipse. Let's take a look at the base stats here. Um, we can see that these two size two fixed size two weapons do a massive 636 DPS, 42 alpha damage. Um, they are Scorpion G2215s, uh, low stealth, right? Um, we can see that the stock missiles it comes with three Argo, Argos 9 cross section torpedoes. Do 1,265,058 damage, all three of them together. That is a ton. Um, we're looking at the shields, the stock shields. Now, everything is stealth here. Now, everything's grade B except for the quantum drive. It's a grade, grade C. Um, but the stealth shields are not bad. Uh, they are veils, stealth grade B, stealth grade B. 2,700 hit points each. For a uh, 5,700 hit point total, a full charge in nine seconds. Stealth stuff charges fast. Uh, 648 hit points a second in recovery. Um, the power plant is a Delta Max Stealth Grade B. We can see it's over half as far as it's, uh, what we're putting on it. Um, that's not good. And then the coolers, Vapor Block Stealth Grade Bs, way over half. More like uh, over three quarters. Um like something like uh, it's it's a lot um so i don't like that um but we still got to keep this ship stealth so uh before we go into components let's take a look at this stuff real quick the pitch and the yaw 60 degrees pitch 55 yaw real slow rolls 103 didn't feel like 103 felt way slower than that uh and quantum fuel is pretty low too uh for size one stuff um it does say the drift could take you all the way from PO to Microtech in this ship in 8 minutes and 12 seconds, and that's not bad. That's faster than the Atlas. But let's actually put some uh, some upgraded components on here. So we can, let's take a look at the Ballistic Gatlings, right? The Scorpion GT215, we can see has a power to EM of 0.78, so really good EM. But not great IR. The IR is a 6, so you're going to show up hot. Let's look at the ballistic cannons. Definitely not the Strife Mass Driver, even though that's pretty darn close to the uh, the GT215. I'd go with the GT215 just because if you're going to go with ballistics, uh, because there's a higher DPS, and you can see you can see as you shoot. Uh, if you want to go stealthy with a ballistic cannon, I believe the, the Deadbolt, the Tarantula, the 10 series greatsword are all the same check out my cannon video everything else is higher definitely don't go with the sledge too it's horrible if you you really want to get high alpha damage per shot you're looking at the strife mass driver but that's not super stealthy although it's not horrible it's 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 just worse than the 215 so you'd still not be detectable 
Um, and there's a pretty good range on that thing, 2542, but still not really that good. Uh, but if you want to go real stealthy, it's these three, the Deadbolt 2, the Tarantula Mark II, or the 10 Series Greatsword. And the Tarantula Mark II gives you the most alpha damage per shot, uh, but the fire rate on the Deadbolt 2 is just a little bit faster. So it really depends on what you like. Um, I don't love the Deadbolt series personally. Um, I like the Tarantula series, so I'd probably go with the Tarantula. Um, if we go down to laser repeaters, you can see the attrition, not super stealthy, 7 IR, 2.35 to, to EM. That's pretty, That's you're, people are seeing you. The NDB 28, definitely, uh, <laughs> they're going to see you. That thing runs hot. But the, the 227 Badger, as far as repeaters go, that's probably your best for stealth. Uh, it's definitely better than the attrition, not by much, but it's a little bit better. But it's less DPS, like significantly. But um, it depends on what you like, right? Uh, the the range on them are all about the same. Actually, the Badger and the Attrition are the same range. So I'd probably risk the Attrition for the higher DPS if you're going to go with the Laser Repeater. Now the Laser Cannons. The NM14 runs hot. Um, 2.2 to EM, 7.2 to IR. Uh, the FL22 is 2. Point, again, this one's actually not bad for IR at 3.9. 2.66 to EM. The M4A is pretty pretty hot to IR, but not bad under EM. Uh, the Omiski is the worst. Um, but I typically choose the Light Strike, and that's what I had in the video is the Light Strike 2. Um, it's not the best DPS, but it actually has, I think it has the best range. So that's one. It's the sniper weapon, right? It's got the best range at 2384. Uh, it's not the best alpha damage, but it's okay. Um, it's look at the power to EM 0.57 temperature to IR 4.8. So probably the best stealth you're going to get for a, any of the weapons, the repeaters or the cannons to, to be able to do damage. So I would stick with the light strike twos, um, or for my weapons for the thing. Now it does take your DPS down, but, oh, whoops, I put the FL 22. Um, yeah, it's still going to take your DPS down, but. This ship is not meant to be in a prolonged type of dogfight. It's uh, it's way too big. It's meant to be stealthy. You hit them with your missiles and you bug out. If you absolutely have to, you dogfight. Speaking of the missiles, let's look at the Argos 9. It is the cross-section version. The Typhoon, I believe, it is the infrared version. And it does have more damage. But it's also easier to spoof with uh, the flares. Um... Lock time on this one is five seconds on the Argos. Look at that lock time. 12.22. Um, your range on this um, is the minimums. Of, um, I'm talking about the Argos. The minimum lock range is a thousand meters. So a kilometer. You have to be a kilometer away, which is not that bad, to be honest with you. It's, it's whatever the edge of your stealth range is, right? So you get your stealth range into something like... Uh, about three, three, three kilometers or something like that, they're going to have less time to react to your missile. Um, but it does take 12.2 seconds to lock on. Um, the lock range max is 50 kilometers. So you can lock on to something 50 kilometers away. So if you're talking about something like an Idris or a big ship like that, then, you know, that that's why you stay that far away. Um, so... Let's go over to the Typhoon. Typhoon does more damage. I know it says cross section. It's not. It's infrared. Um, but it only takes five seconds to lock. But you do need more range to lock, which I, I'm fine with that. I, I can still go 50 kilometers out, but I need a minimum of 2.6 kilometers. I'm okay with that. I really am. Um, I don't know if the speed is faster. Oh, it is faster. Look at the speed of the Typhoon. It's 968 meters a second compared to the Argos, which is 450. So I think I'm, I think, I mean, look, if I'm going to shoot three missiles to get one target, then that's what I'm using probably. Um, but let's look at the EM. The most damage is the EM missile, the Seeker 9. Look, it does, it does more damage than both of the other ones. 
It's electromagnetic, so spoofing it is a little bit harder. Your lock time is still five seconds. Your lock range minimum is 2.6 kilometers. Your max is the same. And the speed is 525. So it's not as fast as the Typhoon, right? Typhoon is designed by Talon. Um, so if you want something that's going to be harder for them to, to probably countermeasure, you're probably like the hardest thing to countermeasure should be the Argos because it's a cross section. The Typhoon's the fastest, so it's going to sink out, up on them the quickest. And the one probably the hardest to, uh, I don't know, it's kind of in the middle, but does the most damage the EM, right? precision it's it's doing a radar type of lock um and it's it's got decent speed it's got more speed than the argos um and it can track pretty darn far 50 kilometer track for pretty much all of these guys except the argos the argos has the work tra worst tracking distance so i'd say don't use the argos if you can upgrade the argos uh go with either the typhoon or the seeker one of the two for sure um, I don't think the Argos is just, I don't think it's worth it. Because um, you saw how easily they spoofed my Argos with uh, with their countermeasures. And I was really far away. So maybe at the, if I'm really far away and I'm looking to snipe, I'm probably looking to something that's going real fast. Or something, you know, or even the Seeker, though, to go, you know, harder to spoof. But enough about weapons, guys. Let's start talking about shields. So our shields right now, 5,400. Let's upgrade both of those to Stealth A Mirages. Which is, whoops, that's military. There we go. So, okay, gives us a little more health, right? Gives us about 700 more health. Um, and it takes one more second to charge. 684 hit points a second. I think it's worth it. You want as much shields as you can get on this thing. And to stay as stealthy as you can, right? Um, you look at the Mirage, it's power to EM is 1.8. Temperature to IR is 1.8. Let's look at the Veil. Veil's 2.4, 2.4. So definitely go with the Mirage. They're stealthier and they're more hit points. The power plant. Okay, it's got the the Delta Max in there, which is, okay, it's 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 stealth. Power to EM, 0.84, temperature 0.84. But I go with the Slipstream. Stealthier, 0.63 to EM and IR. And it's going to give you more power. It's going to give you almost 200 more power, 300 more power. So now when we look at power over here, look, now we're really just below halfway, which is the minimum of what I want. And then for coolers, the vapor block, um, we can look at the vapor block here. Look at the uh, EM is 0.84, IR is 0.84, snow blinds 7474. So definitely go with the snow blinds. You want as much stealth as you can get on this thing. And, and it's going to give you 20 more cooling. So if we change out both of these two snow blinds, our cooling's not great, but it's better than it was now because at least we have a little bit higher capacity. And then for our quantum drive, you could probably leave it with the drift, but if you want maximum stealth, look, the drift is 105 and 105 EM and power. If you go with the Spectre, it's 0 .63, 0 0.63, So, you know, I mean, who knows how close you're going to be to the enemy sometimes when you quantum in. So... Plus, the Spectre is just, it's, uh, it's 30 kilometers a second. I'm sorry, 30,000 kilometers a second faster. So, PO to Hurston, uh, you're saving about 20, almost 30 seconds um, going with the Spectre. So, it's a full upgrade. I've changed out everything on this ship. Let's see how much it costs. Drop it in the cart. We're going to see, let me change all my stuff to where I actually buy stuff. Cause I, I would say I, that has to be fair here. Uh, new Babbage. The only, yeah, everything you can buy at New Babbage. The light strikes you can only buy at New Babbage. And it's 174,643. It's not that bad. That's seriously guys. I've had way worse builds um, that aren't, aren't as nearly as powerful, but you know, obviously this thing's not a dogfighter. So 174,000 off of UEC. That's the build price to outfit the Eclipse to full stealth. And I'm going to be doing a uh, Noob's Guide to Stealth video here uh, pretty soon. It's not going to be like tomorrow or anything, but uh, it's going to be pretty soon. So 
Let me know what you think about this uh, stealth build. Um, what would you do different? I think, you know, I, I was talking to somebody about this stuff, and uh, as far as the stealth goes, we we were talking about, like, coolers. Because um, I typically use industrial coolers for builds that are not stealth. And then um, I think it's Ultra is the guy's name in the chats um, for the videos. And then obviously I'd stealth for this and my cooling is, you know, I don't have a lot of cooling in the eclipse, but I, I didn't, I, from what I saw, the cooling was worse with the snow blinds. Uh, you know, I know they're stealth, but the cooling, I, I overheated my weapons faster than, than a typical ultra flow would be. I guess I need to run some tests. And, and on the same ship, same weapon setup, and just go through different coolers and see the cooling rate myself. I know, I think Subliminal did this already, but um, I, something, something I guess I would really want to find out, like, if that's true, because then I would, I would change things around, I think, a little bit. So, anyway... I'm done with Urkel.Games. We're done with the loadout. On to the next part of the video. See you in a second. Hey guys, Fist here. This is a late edit in the video, but before we move on to the Eclipse commercial, I did want to show you the Aegis Eclipse Best in Show paint job. And uh, here we are taking it out, and I want to give super special thanks out to Bahamut, uh, one of my buddies in the Cobra Force, for lending me his Eclipse for this you can see the white and the gold just look amazing and, and the interior of the cockpit's the same but man look at look at the the exhaust there it's 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 pretty much all the same but the ship looks super different to me and it looks really good it's got that yellow canopy and the kind of the gold yellow accents uh that go with you know, with the best in show paints for twenty nine fifty, um, and this is the only other paint job for the Aegis Eclipse, and I only got it because it was one of the best in shows. So I wanted to make sure I showed you guys this uh, this paint job, and again, thank you a lot to Bahamut. Um, I owe you one, buddy. And uh, now I will push you back to the regularly scheduled program.
Well, hey guys, Fist25 here. I just want to thank everybody for watching the video. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to uh, check out my content. As there's a space battle raging at Port Alisar. Hopefully they're not going to come after me. Although maybe they don't even see me because I'm stealth mode. But no, I seriously, I appreciate it. If you, uh, if you haven't already, please hit the like, the subscribe button, the little notification bell thingy to tell you when our videos go live. I'm trying to do many more of these before we have some kind of a ship wipe, but I can't, and then I'll have to figure out a way to get money again. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching really a lot. Please head to our website, fistingjawa.org. It has all kinds of links on there, a bunch of mining tutorials. Our merch store is up there. We have a brand new merch store. It's in the description. Uh, we're working on adding some more stuff in there, but we got some t-shirts out right now. I just bought some samples, so we're going to wear them on one of our live streams. By the way, check out our live streams. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Take care of each other. Um, and Java would say happy mining. And Fist, I'm going to say good night, Stanton.